In this video, we're going to show a quick animation of the cholinogenic synapse, which uses acetylcholine to generate a new action potential. So let's have a look at our synapse. So a couple of interesting things to note here. We've got the presynaptic neuron on the top left and the postsynaptic neuron on the bottom right. In that presynaptic neuron, we've got vesicles containing acetylcholine. Uh, we've also got calcium channels, that should be CA2 plus channels, um, kicking around in that presynaptic neuron. We've got calcium ions, again, that should be CO CA2 plus, kicking around in the synaptic cleft, which is the gap between them. And we've also got sodium ions in there as well. On the postsynaptic neuron, we've got sodium ion channels. Uh, and what else have we got there? Oh yeah, we've got two enzymes, that's acetylcholine esterase, kicking around in the synapse as well. So let's look at how this works. Firstly, we're going to have an action potential arriving at the presynaptic neuron. Here it comes. And that's going to cause voltage-gated calcium channels to open. Then we're going to have calcium moving in to the presynaptic neuron by facilitated diffusion. Here they go, lining up, and in they go. And this causes those acetylcholine-containing vesicles to start to move towards the synaptic cleft. And what they do is they release the acetylcholine into the cleft by a process called exocytosis, where the vesicles kind of combine with the membrane and spew out all their good stuff into the cleft itself. So here we go. There they are. Now, acetylcholine is then going to diffuse across the cleft and bind to the receptors, which are on the sodium channels on the postsynaptic neuron. That causes them to change their shape and open. There they go, they're open, and this is going to cause uh, sodium ions to rush in to the postsynaptic neuron, like this. There they go, lining up, and in they go. Please ignore the whizzing enzymes, that's just a quirk of my animation skills. The sodium ions are now in the postsynaptic neuron, and this causes a new action potential to be generated in the postsynaptic neuron, but only if the threshold value is met. So you need a certain amount of sodium to move in before you get that action potential continued. So then, what's going to happen? Well, the enzymes come into play. This is acetylcholine esterase, and that's going to pull off the acetylcholine from the receptors. There it goes which causes the receptors to close. Now, that enzyme is going to break down the acetylcholine into choline and ethanoic acid. And that's going to be reabsorbed by the presynaptic neuron, or realistically, just the choline is reabsorbed. Here we go. And that causes... Uh, that moves by diffusion, by the way. Uh, and the acetylcholine is going to be reformed in some new vesicles, ready to start all over again. And that is synaptic transmission with a quick animation. Thank you very much. Link, comment, and subscribe.